Hi, my name is Emmanuel Obodo. I'm a specialist biomedical scientist and I'm also a lecturer in biomedical science here in the United Kingdom. I completed my PhD in biomedical science. I have extensive experience working in NHS hospital as a specialist biomedical scientist. I have used these experiences to help a number of people navigate through interview questions and therefore get their dream job as a biomedical scientist. I'm here to help you navigate interview questions, thereby increasing your chances of getting a job as a biomedical scientist. What I would ask is that you like, share, comment and subscribe to our page. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, um, this is Dr. Emmanuel Obodo again. I'm going to be answering a question. Thank you so much, um, Oko Peter, for sending this. I decided I should make this video, even though I think some of them has been explained when I made a video on blood film interpretation and also when I made a video about white blood cell. But yeah, I'm gonna explain this more details, not a difficult question really. ask you a question during your interview and the question was what I would do to resolve a result of high nucleated red blood cell okay from the analyzer as well as on blood film then you also said they, they also asked the test you would recommend to the clinicians for patient that is having hemolysis I will need your answer, sir. Thank you. Now, I'm going to answer this question. It's very easy, okay? But I understand the confusion here. First of all, I want you to know that nucleated red blood cells shouldn't be in the blood, okay? And if you go back to that video on um, blood film morphology and also the white cell count, okay? You're going to see that I did mention that nucleated red blood cells shouldn't be in the blood. Although we can see that with um, a young, a, a newborn baby. But that shouldn't be in the blood. And the secret to this question is this. Remember that lymphocytes is mononucleated cells. It has one nucleus. Monocyte is mononucleated cells. It has one nucleus. Red blood cell, mature red blood cell shouldn't have nucleus. So when mature red blood cell, when there's nucleus in mature red blood cell, which is nucleated red blood cells, what do you think will happen? The analyzer, the way it is built, <laughs> it is built in such a way that it may think that that nucleated red blood cell is either monocyte or lymphocyte. <laughs> Therefore, if that is the case, you are going to get high total white cell count because remember that total white cell count is a combination of neutrophils, monocytes, eosinophils, basophils and lymphocyte okay so the analyzer will count the nucleated red cells as part of either lymphocyte or monocyte like i've said because monocyte and lymphocyte they are mononucleated cells they have one nucleus and if there's a nucleated red blood cell it will affect the population count the analyzer population count of this either monocyte or lymphocyte and if that is the case, it will give you total white cell count. <laughs> you see it? It will give you total white cell count, which is not, which may not be true. But because there are another thing that that number of nucleated red cells, they are either lymphocyte or monocyte, it will give you high white cell count. Therefore, it will also give you either high lymphocyte count or high monocyte count. Therefore, that is not a correct result. <laughs> so what are you going to do? If you go back to that, when I was showing you guys about blood film interpretation, I did mention about different channels. One of the things I told you there is that, you know, you need to look at, you know, each of the channels. You look at each of the channels, okay? When you look at each of the channels, that they measure different things, okay? Now, what happened, and I did mention to you that when you see any graded or any kind of abnormal population, that you remove the white cells. So what are you going to do? Because you now know that the high population of that nucleated red cells has affected the population, has affected the total white cell count, affected either the lymphocytes or the monocyte count. 
that is not a correct result. So what are you going to do? What you do as a good biomedical scientist is to remove the differential count. Straight away, you remove it. So when you remove the differential count, what you then need to do is to go and do that count manually. Because that is where analyzer is not a human being. That is where you, as a biomedical scientist, will see, wow, this is because of high nucleated red cells. It doesn't mean that neither will not give you nucleated red cells count. Okay? So when it is too much like that, the neither will count some of them as lymphocyte or monocyte. So what are you going to do? You then do the manual differential count. When you are doing the manual differential count, let me tell you how the system is built. Assuming that the total white cell count was, let's say, 15 or 20 okay as the case may be that 15 or 20 should be populated on the percentage of the differential count so by the time you do the by the time you do the differential count if the differential count suggests that the total white cell count should no longer be 15 or 20 as soon as you put in the differential count you have you can now correct the total white cell count if there, for example another i've given you 30 total white cell count and you have the differential count now you've done the differential count manually by the time you calculate the differential count you realize the total white cell count is not 30 it's actually 20 that's how you correct it okay then you correct it because what you've then done is that you have taken knowledge of that nucleated red cells and in consideration of that you've done the differential count this is lymphocyte count this is monocyte count this is neutrophil count and so on that way you can then correct that total white cell count and of course now you have corrected the differential count i hope that makes sense now another question you ask is which test would you recommend in terms of hemolysis to a clinician can i even tell you this a good biomedical scientist don't even need to recommend this you just need to put it in your comment when you look at the blood film let me tell you when there is hemolysis once there is hemolysis one of the strongest thing that causes hemolysis, I did mention it when I was talking about the blood film, is antibody. In fact, let me go directly to the answer. One of the tests you can recommend to that, that, to that clinician is DCT, direct cum test. That's what, you, that's what you recommend. Direct cum test. What does that mean? Indirect cum test is not like indirect anti-globulin test this is direct so direct measures the presence of the antibody on the surface of the red blood cells and that is what is causing hemolysis in most cases you see it now so as a biomedical scientist like people who are experienced okay so what we do is that once we see that high hemolysis like spherocytes okay fragmented red cells one of the things we we'll do is to go and do dct direct cum test and in most cases it will be positive then you cannot let the clinicians know that the dct is positive therefore and that is a reflective of the morphology of the blood film suggesting hemolysis so what you are going to recommend to answer your question is dct direct cum test because direct cum test measures the presence of the antibody on the surface of the red cells and when antibody binds the red cells it will cause hemolysis to start destroying the red cells. I hope I've answered your question. Once again, thank you very much for putting this up. And like I've told you guys, keep sending your questions. Yes, I'm very busy, but I'm more than happy to give these kind of short videos to explain your answers to you. Thank you very much again, once again, um, Peter, for sending that again. And thank you so much for your kind messages. Don't worry, I'm sure that the video will go viral. Thank you. Till I come back your way again. Bye.